Greetings, friends, in Facebook land. I'm starting a new series of teachings on evangelism entitled, Who Will Rise Up? Of course, that's the title of my first book. And I have here, I pulled out, uh, they're this pretty rare around today, a first edition of uh, Who Will Rise Up uh, by Jed Smock, subtitled, A Fiery Preacher compels you to radical Christianity. So that's what we're going to be dealing with, is radical Christianity, getting back to the fundamentals of evangelism and going into all nations and preaching the gospel. Actually, I got this theme from our dear late brother, Max Lynch, and we rose up here initially in Terre Haute and Indiana State University uh, back in the uh, early 70s, to preach the gospel. And I remember the day Max approached me with Psalm 94 and verse 16. And he had an underline in his Bible. And he read, Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? And he said, uh, What about you, Brother Jed? And I said, I'm ready. I'm going to rise up against evil and cry out against it and impose uh, sin and call people to righteousness and holiness. So Brother Max and I rose up here in Terre Haute and the ministry eventually spread across the country to all 50 states as well as uh, uh, campuses abroad. But I want to give the context uh, this morning of, of uh, who will rise up, Psalm 94 and verse 16. It begins by uh, a prayer, really, O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth. O oh God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. We got, want God to reveal himself to this generation. And of course, God has revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ, and now he reveals himself through the church in which we are the body of Christ. Show thyself, lift up thyself, thou judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. God has sent us to the proud and to the arrogant college students. They're not typically humble. They think they're know-it-alls. And the fact of the matter is they know very little, especially when it comes to spiritual matters and the Bible. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? Don't we all wonder that at times? We see wickedness growing worse and worse and certainly in the 47 years I've been on campus today it's uh, much worse than it was when we uh, uh, started almost a half century ago and it seems like the wicked and sin has the upper hand and we wonder when's God gonna move and take action and put a stop to this how long are these wicked gonna triumph Christ triumph he rose from the grave and he said, all power is given on to me in heaven and earth. And we need to take this power that Christ now has given on to his church and evangelize the world, evangelize the nations. How long shall the wicked utter and speak hard things and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. They slay the widow and stranger and murder the fatherless. Murder the fatherless. Wouldn't that be a reference to uh, abortion? Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob be guarded. Understand, ye brutish among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? The psalmist said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And we encounter atheists, skeptics, agnostics on campus who say there is no God. And we say there is a God. And our God reigns. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. But there's so many that they're not so blatant 
to say that there is no God. Uh, they're not blatantly, outwardly atheists. They might even claim to be in God, believe in God, but they're saying in their heart there is no God as they boast themselves, as they continue in their sin and, the, and wickedness, there's no God that's going to ultimately judge them. There's no final exam coming up. So, so many people, although they profess to believe in God, in their heart, um, they say he doesn't exist. When will you be wise? The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. To depart from evil is knowledge, is understanding. So the beginning of wisdom is to fear God. And the fear of God is a holy dread of doing anything that would displease him. Jesus preached the fear of God. Jesus said, fear not him that kills the body. And after that has nothing more that he can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him who had to kills the body has power to cast into hell. And of course, the message of contemporary evangelism is God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. Well, God does love everyone. Problem is, most people don't love God in return. And they need to learn the fear of God. So we go on campus and we teach them the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom. We need to start people at the starting line, which isn't the love of God, that's the finish line. The starting line is the fear of God. Verse 9, he that planteth the ear, shall he not hear? He that formeth the eye, shall he not see? He that chastiseth the heathen, shall he not correct? And he that teacheth man knowledge, shall he not know? The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man that they are vanity. And the thoughts and the subjects uh, these students are studying on campus, especially in the liberal arts, it's all vanity and vexation of spirit. They're always learning some new thing, some new idea, but they've rejected the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, which is the, the beginning of knowledge and understanding. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teacheth them out of thy law. So we go and we teach the students out of the law of God. That thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. So right now, the pit for the wicked is being digged. We're warning them. We don't want them to fall into the pit. We want them to be saved but they're gonna fall into the pit if they don't turn from their wicked, wicked ways. Verse 14, for the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance, but judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. So if we have a pure heart, we'll follow righteousness. And the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. When you're living right, it'll give you a boldness to oppose evil, to cry out against sin, call the world to repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then verse 16, who will rise up for me against the evildoers or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity. And of course, I preach this um, signature message of mine, who will rise up all over the nations. I suppose I've delivered this message thousands of time. And often at the end of the sermon, I'll have people, uh, volunteers, I ask for volunteers, are you gonna rise up? I'll say, write your name behind, beside verse 16 of Psalm 94. Put the date in there when you made your commitment to take a stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with the truth, putting on the whole armor of God. And that's what we're going to be doing, and we're going to be studying how you can be effective in rising up against evil. Thank you for joining us today. Amen.